Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, May 26th, 2017. Welcome to another eBay video. Guys, it is freaking raining again. Jesus Christ, it has rained every day this week since I saw you. I saw you last Friday. Remember it was sunny and 90? This week it has been cloudy, rainy, and cool the whole week. I am in a coat. This is the coat I wear out in the winter time. It is 50 degrees. It is raining. The forecast for the Memorial Day weekend is cloudy and rainy through till next Tuesday. Not only do we get the most cloudy rainy days of the United States, but it consistently rains every Memorial Day weekend. I'm not kidding guys. Those of you who are long standing viewers of mine can go back and look at some of my old videos from this time of year. You'll see it rains every one. Anyway, let's get started with today's eBay video. We're going to be talking about, I have brought back the Hall of Shame this week, so we'll have a nice little segment there. We're going to talk about what happens when a buyer asks you to ship his item in a few days or next week. We're going to talk more about your comments from last week's video, which were quite good and many were on point, and some other eBay issues that you guys seem to have concerns with. I'm going to start out with your comments from last week's video. On duplicate listings, Mighty Buffoon wrote, Joe, I think that since you got spanked for the duplicate listings because your listing titles were exactly the same, whereas the seller who had 600 duplicate listings didn't get spanked since they made subtle changes to their titles. All the title has to do is change by one character and the computer code won't detect it as a duplicate listing. I've seen people do that. They'll put something like, something generic, Hess Toy Truck 1, Hess Toy Truck 2, Hess Toy Truck 3, etc., etc., and get away with it. However, the person that I showed you a few weeks ago was a real egregious spammer and duplicate lister. I have several comments on free returns that I'd like to read to you. Man, it's windy out. Holy crap! Only I would film a video outside for you guys on a day like this. Because the lighting is lousy inside. Leisure Picker wrote, I would never opt into free returns and two-month returns unless eBay pays for them. I'm a bit concerned with eBay on this. We are not in the rental business. I am concerned to some degree, a percentage, whatever that may be, may turn into that and people will buy certain things, use them for two months and return them with three return shipping. Is it a realistic concern? I don't know, but to some degree I think it might be. There are always enough things chipping away at profits. Adding more isn't going to help good sellers. The return policy is already more than generous. I personally already have a 30-day return policy. eBay might at some point make it mandatory over time. So they will end up doing what they want to do anyways. Hopefully they won't push out many of the good sellers in the process of all this. As I've told you guys, do what works for you. But I myself will not opt into the free returns program as it is written. Judah Ryan wrote, Hi Joe and YouTube audience. I'm going to give the free returns a shot this summer. I sell in electronics and video games. In both of these markets, my experience, I have very low return rate. I can't remember getting a return on a video game, console, or controller. In electronics, I sell pretty much everything and have only a few returns. I think why these two markets, at least for me, have very low returns is because buyers know their stuff. They're an enthusiast or a hobbyist. Or if it's broken, they're buying an item to fix and resell or use themselves and there isn't any confusion in the terms of quality. I know cars and other markets have their enthusiasts, but video games and electronics might be a little easier for the average person to understand. No offense, Joe. 
That totally makes sense to me. Certain categories have very low return rates, such as collectibles for one. Yet eBay Motors continues to dominate the return rates. I'm telling you, I get plenty. This week I've only had two, but what's weird about these, both customers had their item for about three weeks before contacting me and they didn't do it the correct way. They did not initiate a return. They contacted me through eBay and said that they bought the wrong size. They want to return them. So in both cases I said sure, I'll, I'll take the return, but keep in mind I have a 30 day return policy. You've already had the item for three weeks and if you want to return it, you must do it through the eBay returns process. And I explained, to, I explained to them how to do it. While I'm on that topic, earlier in this week, I made a couple of extra videos. One was how to return an item on eBay. I don't know if any of you guys saw it. I hope you did. Maybe I'll put a link in the comment section below, or you can just check my other videos. I put that out there, not just for you guys, but for random people. So people will learn how to do a return through the streamlined eBay process and not circumvent eBay as they've been doing. On, also on free returns, Skinny Cow wrote, the free returns program, nope, not me. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. I already had my top seller fee slashed from 20% to 10%, so no way am I opting into anything that might be a negative on my income. And again, I see his point. In my opinion, for me, there is nothing to gain by offering free returns. I can only lose and lose big the way it's written right now. On general returns, 5797029 wrote, Joe, I also sell some items in eBay Motors and my returns have increased. Earlier this week, there was a box at my front door. It was a hubcap and on the box, someone wrote, refused return to sender. I had shipped this item a month ago and the box had not been opened. There had been no messages informing me of this. I immediately contacted the buyer asking what they wanted me to do next. Still waiting for a response, Mike S. Mike, that has happened to me over my eBay career. I had gotten things back that were refused or I had gotten things back that were opened and just returned to me with no communication whatsoever. Crazy, but it's true. You're not the only one. But again, what's the common feature here? eBay Motors, okay? eBay Motors gets a ton of traffic but it gets a ton of people that don't know what they're looking at. On China sellers, Brad R. Pickens wrote, <coughs> Glitch.com, aka eBay, is ridiculous, Joe, and the big box China sellers are untouched and flooding the search with duplicates. I agree with them about the China sellers. They're a scourge. We've got to do something to eradicate them. They're like a growing cancer. The last comment I'm going to read is my favorite comment of the week, and it's from Burned Frozen. I just want to say thank you because you come on YouTube every Friday without fail with valuable information. I love hearing the latest news about eBay and hearing from the community. So thank you for the comment, sir. And let's keep the information flowing and the lines of communication open. Let us now move into some current topics from this week. The first thing that happened is very interesting and a bit perplexing to me. The other day I had a person buy an item from me, paid right away, and then with the payment sent me, they attached a little message, message from, from buyer, and they said, Joe, would you please wait to ship this item till Friday because I'm going away for the Memorial Day weekend and I won't be around to accept any packages till after Tuesday. So, okay, that's fine. No problem with that. I have no problem doing it. But then I started to think. I said, wait a minute. I have a one day handling time. 
Will that affect my status on eBay in any way? And if so, will I get spanked? So just for the heck of it, I decided to contact eBay and check in. And I didn't call eBay customer service because I wasn't too confident on what they would tell me. I decided to go to the top of the line. So I contacted somebody very high in the food chain and I asked them that question. And they said, Joe, that will indeed show as a defect on your account. And I said, why? I said, the buyer is requesting this. It's only good customer service if I acquiesce to what the buyer wants and hold the box for a few days. And they said, no, they said, I'm sorry, but it's going to show as a defect if you do not ship that item in one day, even if the buyer has asked you through eBay contact information. That really bummed me out, okay? So this person then said to me, Joe, what are you worried about? You sell a large volume of hubcaps. This will not even be a blip on the radar for you. If, however, you were doing it five times a week, then it would be an issue. But as it is, how he says to me, how often does this happen? I said, very rarely. He said, forget about it. Don't worry about it. But the point I'm trying to convey, guys, is I don't like it. If we are trying to bend over backwards to help the customer, should we be penalized for that? I'd like to know if any of you guys have ever had a customer ask you to hold his box for a few days and ship it out because he was going away or something. And if so, do you think we should be penalized for that? I'm just a little bummed out over that. Comments below. The important thing here, guys, and I say this week after week, I am a huge eBay fanboy. I love eBay. I love everything about it. But when there's a feature that doesn't work right, or something that flies in the face of reality, I will bring it up on my channel here and I will discuss it, period. That's why this channel I believe is so popular, is because you will get straight talk from me, no matter what. The next item, something we haven't done for a few weeks, we're going to bring back the eBay Sellers Hall of Shame. Let's go to that right now. Okay guys, here I'm going to show you a seller who has been violating procedure and continues to violate it. This is the first time I've ever showed a single seller a second time. As you can see, they're listing an item for $25 in an auction format. They're out of Grimsby, Ontario, Canada, and they're listing the shipping at $1, which is pathetically too low. If you read the description in the listing below this, the seller clearly states that they are too busy to figure out the correct shipping from Canada, and they will only do it upon completion of a winning auction. Now by eBay rules, anybody that wins this item, whether it's $25 or whatever, legally has to pay only $1 shipping. As I said several months ago, this listing could open up a world of trouble for this seller, but they refuse to follow eBay procedure. Here I have a longtime seller who, conservatively speaking, has been doing this for five years. He is selling one item keyword spamming with every word he can fit in there and he shows a picture of about 35 items even though you're only getting one item and he does this in every single one of his listings you can see it's the same guy with 99.4 percent feedback that's him again that's him yet again there are many more examples but I have to move on and show you some other folks now this gentleman right here is using Hollander's pictures in his listings, which is a huge violation. Number one, it's a copyright violation against Hollander. Number two is Hollander is a trade publication that shows brand new items. 
and as you can see he's selling used items so the item you get will never be in such good condition as this and he does it in almost all of his listings his feedback is a whopping 98.9 percent .9%, which on eBay is utterly terrible I realize that eBay themselves can't really step in and file a Vero complaint that's something Hollander would have to do but he is violating their rules by showing a brand new item and selling a used item instead this particular seller here I would not say is a bad seller but I thought this would give you a little chuckle they are selling two items here two hubs for one thousand dollars I am not kidding their feedback is ninety nine point two percent I think this might be a typographical error but I went into their other listings and they have similar items like this that they're asking nine hundred ninety nine dollars for I really don't understand it because the Toyota dealer only charges a hundred dollars each for brand new Prius hubcaps anyway that is it for today's Hall of Shame folks drink time alright guys regarding the Hall of Shame first I showed you the person from Canada who I showed you several months ago who is still violating eBay policy by listing the shipping from Canada for a dollar and refusing to actually list the correct shipping fee until she finds out who the winning bidder is that person could be in for a world of hurt if I or you or anybody bought that item for 25 bucks I then paid her right away with PayPal $26 you know by eBay rules she would have to ship that item for $26 I just don't get it after her I listed one guy who was showing pictures of a pile of items those little center plugs for the alloy rims that guy's been doing that for at least five years and he's doing it in probably close to a hundred listings I just picked out a few up the top what is in the picture is the item you're supposed to get that is another eBay policy violation it's been going on for five years I don't see that ever stopping no I never reported him nor did I report the lady from Canada because there's no sense in reporting anybody at least not through the report this item channel that's just not gonna work then I showed you the guy who was using Hollander's pictures in his listings I want to take some time out and explain this Hollander makes a trade publication okay it's for reference all right let me just show you some pictures here well if you look really close you can see the word Hollander is embossed over every picture okay that's their trademark and that's their right this is their intellectual property on the inside cover right here there is a disclaimer all right that says you are not allowed to electronically reproduce any part of this yet people are doing it not a lot of people just a few including that one guy I showed you that's an especially egregious violation because it's also not representative of what the person is buying these are pictures of new hubs and he is selling used ones so that's something to keep in mind and then there was the last item I showed you which was a joke a guy selling two hubcaps for a thousand dollars guys I don't understand why he did that at all okay two brand new hubcaps the Toyota dealer charges hundred dollars each for those Prius hubcaps and this guy wants a thousand dollars for two I thought it might be a mistake a typo but he's got several listings going and he's asking for a thousand dollars in each one so that's very weird all right that's gonna be it for the hole of shame I have to step in a little closer to the wall because you can't see it but I'm totally wet the water's hitting me man this rain is really coming down well guys I'm getting too wet out here so I'm gonna have to bring this to a close let's do a quick rehash now and I'll like comments on the following topics 
number one I spoke to you about my customer who asked to have a box delayed in shipment he asked me to hold it for him which I'm going to do I'm going to ship it later today and I'd like to know if you guys a ever get a request like that and B what do you guys think about eBay spanking us for holding a box a couple of days if the customer requested I don't think it's right and I'm saying it on camera because I am a realist and I say what I feel I love eBay but there are certain policies that need to be adjusted and that's an example right there of one of them so if any of you guys have any comments or experiences on that comment below please if you have any comments on any of the new inductees into the Hall of Shame or if you've seen any similar things or if you have anybody you think should be inducted into the Hall of Shame, contact me at crazynydriver at AOL.com. Right there. That's the way I accept potential inductees and no other way. Okay, guys? And one other thing. I, I almost hate to ask you this, but I'm just curious. What is your forecast for the Memorial Day weekend as far as weather? Now, if you're a poor, unfortunate slob like me and live on the East Coast, what you see now is going to continue till Tuesday. We cannot catch a freaking break with the weather. Cloudy and rainy every day. We have only two type of weather. Cloudy and rainy or cloudy. Today is cloudy and rainy. The only day it's not going to actually rain will be Saturday morning. They said Saturday morning will be dry, but it will kick back in later in the day. And then rain will commence every single day till at least Tuesday. Bummer, man. Bummer. But please, please put yourself in my position. How would you feel if every Memorial Day weekend you go on Facebook and see all your friends out west and down south posting pictures of them at a barbecue, waving, enjoying the sun, getting a sunburn, and you're stuck inside in the rain consistently every year. I'm Crazy New York Driver, you're not. Thanks for watching, guys. Comments below, I really am interested in what you guys have to say because as you see, your comments will dictate what I talk about next week. I am a seller friend, not a seller critic or a skeptic of any kind. I come out here and I make these videos and I hope they help you. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, comment them below. Thanks for watching. Rock on and peace! <laughs> yeah!